I wanted to start a video series where I took problems in physics that you can write down and get a differential equation for, but you're stuck. You can't find a solution. What I'm going to do is we're going to solve it on the computer. Today, we're looking at friction in the air, something you're told to ignore for probably most of your life in physics or math. But we're going to include it because friction exists. Without further ado, Maestro, cue the derivation. You like my picture? We got three dudes falling. We got a frog. We're good to go. You ready? Things about to get crazy. All right. Let's get to it. Air friction dog, we in that real life. Living life. High school up to now, ignore it, causing mad strife. Ouch. Set up that ODE, OG, I see gravity. Friction proportional to the square of velocity. Quadratic. All right, folks, we have our ODEs. Let's get to it. So I uh, write them here again, just for a summary. Uh, the derivative of x velocity and y velocity with respect to time. It depends on, of course, the x and y velocity themselves and the parameters b, m, and g. g being gravity, m is the mass of the falling person, and a b is related to the friction. Now, before we get into solving it in Python, I thought I would give a little bit of intuition on why we do things this way. So here's uh, Paint, one of the best programs uh, invented. And you'll note that all differential equations are written in this form. You have dy dx is equal to some function of x and y. So maybe dy dx equals x, in which case y equals 1 half x squared plus c, for example. Uh, but they're always written in this form x, y. And there's an alternative way to think about these things. And that is, you know, say for example, I pass in x equals 2 and y equals 3. Then I'll get a specific slope here. Maybe the slope is equal to two, so I can like draw that slope like this. But I can do this for any x, y point on the plane. And maybe I'll get a bunch of different slopes depending on where I go. So I pass in different x, y values, I get different slopes. And then with the differential equation, the whole point is that you give it an initial condition. And all it does is it will follow these slopes. And that's how it gets the solution. So in Python, what it'll do is it'll compute the functional values and it will just follow the slopes. And uh, that's how it iterates to get the solution. All right, back to Python. So here's our uh, thing here. Now the libraries I'm importing are NumPy as always, matplotlib. And here I'm importing a, importing a scipy function called odeint used to solve differential equations. It's a popular one. It's not the only one, but it's a good one. So here we have two differential equations, two steps always to solving these in Python. First, we have a system. I always call system S. It's a nice way of summarizing it, system S. And that's equal to VX, VY. These are the things we want to solve for. First, we need to define a function that takes in time and S and returns DS, DT. How does that work? Well, it takes in vx and vy and it needs to return the derivative of vx and vy which is essentially what these two equations are they take in vx and vy and they return these derivatives uh, ds dt will be a vector of vx and vy so i'll define ds dt uh, it takes in s itself t and it's going to take in the parameters g m and b and it's going to return a vector uh, the first thing is going to be um, dvx dt where of course um, vx is equal to s0 remember s is a vector vy is equal to s1 like this so first it returns uh, dvx dt and then dvy dt looks similar except it has a minus g here 
and then it also has a VY at the end. So this is DVX DT, and this is DVY DT. So now I have a function that takes an S and T and it returns all these parameters. I also need to run this cell. So now what we need to do is we need to use our ODE solver. That's pretty simple. I'm gonna call it solution. The ODE solver we're using is called ODE int. Takes in the function DSDT. Takes in our initial conditions. Um, now we do need to define our constants first and the times we want to solve over. So I'm going to say the times I want to solve over are, um, let's take 100 times between 0 and 20. I'm going to say that uh, M is equal to 80 kilograms, G is 9.81. So 80 kilogram man falling on Earth. And in order to get B, um, we don't quite know what B is exactly, but we can find it if we know what the terminal velocity of someone on Earth is. And so we know it's around 50 meters per second. So that's terminal velocity. So I'm going to add that. And then using this fact, the fact that when someone's falling at terminal velocity, the friction force and the gravity force are equal. You can set them equal and solve for B. And I'll leave this as an exercise, but you get that B is equal to M times G divided by VT squared. And I'm going to say VT is minus 55 because you're falling downwards. Then we need our initial conditions. I'm gonna say that these are equal to um, V naught X. The plane's moving at around 50, 60 meters per second. That's around 200 kilometers an hour. And V naught Y is zero. You're not, the plane's not moving up or down. And so now we can solve. Our initial conditions is V naught X, V naught Y. Our time is equal to T. And we have additional arguments, which need to be passed as a tuple. And uh, in order of the function, we have G, M, and B. Now we get our solution. Very simple. See, easy code. Most of the code is defining the parameters. You solve it instantly. Now, if we look at our solution, it's a little complicated. Here you have um, your V naught uh, X's like this and your V naught Y's. But it's, it's given as like an array of a bunch of you know, two element things. We could transpose this with dot capital T, and then I can take my first, and this gives me VX's, and my second gives me the VY's. So I transpose it and I take these, and I can plot these. And you see that in terms of VX, it starts at 50 meters per second, but you slowly approach zero meaning you're initially going through the air when you're launched out of the plane and you slowly approach uh, zero. Whereas uh, V naught Y, as you can expect, you approach a terminal velocity. So you start at zero and you slowly and slowly approach minus 55. And as a matter of fact, I can show you, I'll add this at uh, VT. I want a H line. Let's make it red. And you can see that although we start at zero meters per second, we slowly, slowly, slowly approach minus 55 meters per second. Now, here's a question you can't answer on paper. It's a little tough and where you need simulation. Someone might ask, how long does it take until you're within about 1% of terminal velocity? So if terminal velocity is 50 meters per second, 1% is about 0 0.5 meters per second. So you're basically at terminal velocity. Well, that's tough to do on paper, but we can do it on a computer pretty easily. I'll do it like this. So we know our VY is an array like this. Now, what we want is we want VY minus VT. So this is our Y velocity minus our terminal velocity, right? So we know our, we approach our terminal velocity when this gets to zero. When the difference between what our our actual velocity is and the terminal velocity is small, then we're close to zero. Let's take the absolute value of this. Just so we know that we're, I mean, I'm sure it's positive, but you know, it's getting close. And we wanna be within 1%. So 1% um, means I have to divide by terminal velocity like this. So this gives us percentages. 
So in order to be within 1%, we want to be less than 0 0.01. Uh, so for this, I can, I can do some Boolean indexing. I can say, okay, we're less than 1%. What this does is it returns an array of uh, trues and falses. I call this an index array, so let's call it IND. And I'm gonna go VY. Oh, let's go times, right? Because we wanna know what time we're close, we're less than zero, um, we're within 1%. So T at indices, and it tells me that after about 17 point sec, around 17 seconds, you're within 1% of terminal velocity. Boom, done. You like my picture? We got three dudes falling. We got a frog. We're good to go. You ready? Things about to get crazy. All right, let's get to it. Air friction dog, we in that real life. Living High life. school up to now, ignore it, causing mad strife. Ouch. Set up that ODE, OG, I see gravity. Friction proportional to the square of velocity. Quadratic. 